Well, how do there, chums? It looks like we've got the patch notes. We've got the patch notes for Expedition 16. People on the side of the universe. Awesome. So here we go. Let's jump on over into screen and let's have a better look at these, shall we? Okay. Well, here we are. Let's, uh, let's just zoom in a tad more. Hello, everyone. Our last update saw players enjoying a nice, chill time. Fishing in No Man's Sky, the Aquarius update. Our next update couldn't be more different. As we approach Halloween, we're embracing the spookier side of No Man's Sky's universe, drawing upon threads first established way back in Atlas Rises, when ancient portals began to open and the boundaries between realities first began to crumble. Today we're announcing Expedition 16, there's some purple, yeah, lovely, the cursed, where players will fight to keep a grip on reality while haunted by visions and voices from another dimension. Voices from another dimension. Interesting. Let's hit on up the trailer, shall we, people? Let's, uh, let's make this full screen. Now, I've turned the sound down, but not completely off. There we go. I'm going to talk over this one. I've seen things. I quite like all that weird swirliness around the edges of the screen. This looks like it's a new sort of enemy fauna. Could it be boss-like? I've seen little ones appearing next to it. I've already watched this trailer once. I love the look of this new ship. That looks freaking cool, doesn't it? It looks like one of those little robot hoovers or something. It's pretty darn cool. That planet's nice that they're on. I, I like that. I like the little three little legs that come out the bottom of the ship. Very nice. Here's some more of those sort of like pod-like weird creatures. Very sweet. I like their animation. They do move quite nice. And that ship does look very swish. I would like to see the cockpit. Sadly, you don't see the cockpit in this trailer. And this new sort of visage for the face looks quite cool. And again, you've got those squid-like creatures. And they can sort of like dive and come towards you as well by the looks of things. That, I liked how the ship was sort of like slightly part wonky there. That looked cool. What the heck was he shooting at there? But when it died, it made sort of like rainbow effects. And when he shoots these, look, they get that rainbow effect to come off of it. I really like that. That's really quite cool. It's oily type effect. And that looked almost boss-like there, didn't it? So there we go. That's the actual trailer for it. it. Does look quite good. Does sort of sound intriguing. Let's scroll on down. The curse takes place in a shot, a shot of Twilight Realm. Okay. Straddling the boundary between one reality and the next. See, I quite like this whole idea of the realm of glass. And here we go. Travellers will not have access to the hyperdrive technology, meaning no warping between star systems. Instead, interstellar travel can only take place via the ancient portal network. It looks like the portals are all going to go purple. Heck yeah, we have seen that happen before. But there we go, it's going purple. Uh, and there we go. That's, uh, oh, I, I do like the landing of that. It does look cool. Haunting voices leaking through from another dimension will provide guidance, information, and strange blueprints. Mm. And a mystery, it's up to you to decide who these voices belong to, where they're coming from, and if they are to be trusted. Now, there's no mention of this being ARG Part 4. So I don't know whether it's related to the Void Mother or whether this is another race entirely. It's interesting. It's got. It's, it's intriguing. In regular No Man's Sky play, travellers must steel themselves against a variety of environmental hazards, such as extreme temperatures, radioactivity, and toxic atmospheres. The cursed, however, pits you against a single more insidious threat: the weakening of the boundaries of reality. Your exosuit comes fitted with a specialized anomaly suppressor, suppressor maintained. Maintain it to stay firmly in this reality. <laughs> okay, all right. So it means different resources, essentially, and different things to top up different things. Spectral anomalies, ghostly creatures drifting across the boundaries will gather to watch. Travellers moving through their domain. Most of the time, they're simply there to observe. But be warned, as your suit's anomaly suppressor weakens, time will begin to... Time will begin to behave in a non-linear ways, and these anomalies may turn hostile. So they're actually time distortions. When I was talking about Doctor Who type-esque stuff, it kind of, yeah. It's got that HP Lovecraft feel to it too. That does look like Cthulhu, doesn't it? A little, you know. 
Yeah. Anyway, travelers will be travelers will need to prepare a number of these otherworldly concoctions to navigate through the cursed, sustain boundary strength with the elixir of glass, reveal the locations of portals with the elixir of quicksilver, and prize open gateways with the elixir of blood. For those that reach the end of the journey, its final trial will be to require a drink from the elixir of water. You shouldn't drink of the water. You really shouldn't. And the consequences there on after. Yeah, there will be consequences. <laughs> We've warned of them all the time. The curse expedition begins today and will run for approximately two weeks. Ooh, brilliant. Okay. Travel behind the, beyond the boundaries and fortify your mind against spectral anomalies or succumb to the call of the world of glass. Sweet. Two weeks is very short for an expedition. Normally they go for about four to six, don't they? It's two weeks. I think this is going to be smaller but more fun, more engaging, with a lot more action and perhaps a little bit of lore. But I think this is going to be very separate from you know, the rest of the game. I don't think this is bringing much into the game. The Cursed Expedition Rewards. Boundary Anomaly Portal Breach and Glyph Posters. Pretty darn nice. Now look at that. There's one glyph missing. It's this one at the top here, this little triangle. Yeah, the Triforce is missing. Okay, brilliant. Well, lovely. Get them some lovely posters. I do like this one. This is quite cool. It would be cool to put that around a normal base teleporter terminus, wouldn't it? So you've got all these sort of like glyphs around it. That looked quite cool. Then have this on a screen or something, like you're inputting something. Yeah, it looked quite cool. You can make a really good teleporter room with those, I think. Anomaly cell base part. During the curse... Ah, oh, okay. The spectral energy radiating from this ancient artifact protects nearby entities against catastrophic reality breaches so that's in the expedition however in a more stable universe our universe the anomaly seal serves as a decorative souvenir from behind the boundaries i was really really hoping that after this expedition ends there'd be a way to access these strange bizarre planets with these strange creatures and i was hoping that this thing would sort of like keep them away from your base not the case, by the sounds of things, people. I was hoping that something would leak in as content from the expedition. At least something like that. I was also hoping that that tentacle mask was a hint that we are going to see a new race that may be coming to attack our bases. Inside of the last episode I'd done, that was a speculation I came up with. It looks like my imagination got the better of me, people. It lo this looks very sort of surface level type stuff and cosmetic type stuff. A bit of fluffy dice, but a little bit of fun side arc. But then there's part of me that's thinking a lot of what we're seeing inside of this could be a taste of what might be coming should they introduce purple planets. Ink stained jetpack trail, an exclusive jetpack customization, a localized anomaly with inside the jetpack's cores, allows a spectral afterglow of the boundary horrors to leak across this reality. It does look quite nice. I like the after effect at the bottom of the trail. Like when you get, get to a height, it's like it's almost like those oily patterns when you shoot the actual weird sort of space cuttlefish. Boundary horror mandibles. Okay. I mean, this is a boundary horror, and it says that that other thing that that shield thing protects you against boundary horrors so i expected these things to be coming at us but mm, not quite there yet i guess bioluminescent companion and it looks like we're going to get one of these sort of like see y type creatures and it looks like a strider i don't know about you but i've run out of pet slots i've also run out of ship slots i'm gonna have to ditch a pet and ditch a ship unless hello games gives us the ability to have more pets more ships which i think we sorely need especially ships because now that we can customise ships, I've got quite a lot of ships. All ships that I've fully upgraded. And I do want this new ship. I'm going to have to make a tough choice on which one to ditch. I got rid of my golden vector. I'm never going to get that back now. There's no way to get it inside a game. Well, there we go. Anyway, there we go. So here's this uh, starship. Like I say, I'm going to need to free up a ship. I've got a hard decision. Unless Hello Games puts in some more slots. That looks freaking fantastic though doesn't it heck yes i have to say that's one of the nicest looking ships alongside the starborn runner if you've got a new ship designer salute mondo you're doing a freaking excellent job pay rise <laughs> yeah. well you probably i don't know what you paid there you go community research we've got all these fireworks we'll be finding out what else is in store inside of the quicksilver store soon as soon as i know i'll let you guys know and i'll put a video out on what's to come 
and then community spotlight we've got some fantastically creative people out there inside of the no man's sky verse i guess we do i love this it's very nice it's a nice 3d printed um multi tool as well oh i like this little poster that's awesome they're going fishing and then kaboom they get eaten by a freaking leviathan we need bigger deeper underwater creatures heck yes lovely jubbly and some lovely images there that one's by leo's yep yeah, cool and uh, very nice very nice indeed light no fire reminder the trailer there lovely and then just a shed load of patches there that i haven't read or looked into all that much but there we go people that's that's pretty much everything when it comes to this update so although that we had the gib we also had the gib when aquarius dropped now normally the gib is reserved for quite large beefy updates and we haven't seen it for some time and then we saw it when no we, we saw it on origins and we saw it in worlds part one very deserved both of those but aquarius got it and this has also got it and i wouldn't say these are big on their own unless this is unless these are somehow sort of linked into worlds part two and sean's using the gib as if to say well it, it's coming it's coming i don't know I'm hoping that Wells Part 2 delivers in some of these gnarly new purple systems that have got a lot of these sort of bits going on. Maybe a bit of the drift, where they're a bit more barren, a little bit of um, the whole thing with the distant planets, the purple crystals and all that. And maybe add in some of these jellyfish weird creatures and bioluminescent creatures. Anyway, what's your take on this, people? After reading these patch notes, how did you feel? Let us know in the comments. I've also got a poll up. And I've just asked people over there. I'll do a follow-up video. I'm going to jump into the expedition. Hopefully I can actually run it now. And have a better look at it before I make up my judgments. Because this does look like it could be a fun one. And I don't want to sell it short. Until next time. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.